Hello, everyone. Um, so in this video, we are doing some Azure Stick HCI cluster housekeeping stuff. So Karsten, what is in your terms, what is your housekeeping that you're doing? <laughs> so we, uh, we will uh, have two parts of housekeeping. Uh, this in the first part, we will do two things. We will assign a witness to our mm -hmm. cluster and we will um, change a bit the networking names that we see here. Uh, but this is uh, not mandatory, it's optional. But I like to have the cluster networks have names that I can understand. Yeah, because if, yeah. if there's something wrong with the cluster network uh, and you have in your event logs, Lock, cluster log network files, two yeah. has problems or so, I don't know which network it is. Mm. Yeah. So first we will assign a witness. And why do we do that? Because we have a four node cluster. And in a four node cluster, it is possible that we have a split brain situation. So imagine you have four nodes, uh, two nodes go away suddenly, or even two nodes can't talk to the other two nodes. Yeah, we have very bad networking, and there is a situation where the first and second node can't talk to three and four. Yeah. So uh, in this scenario, these two nodes have VMs running and don't know what, what is with the nodes on the other side. So are these mm -hmm. down? They have to assume they are down. So they want to start the VMs from the other two nodes. And that's mm -hmm. fine. But now these two nodes are also running and they don't see uh, node one and two. So what do they assume? They are down and they want to start the VMs that are running here. And mm -hmm. now we have a cat catastrophe because our SQL server is running two times. And that's not good, you can imagine, if, if the database changes on two sides. So we have to avoid that. So mm -hmm. in this scenario, it would be better that all nodes shut down. Yeah? The cluster helps itself if it has an even number of uh, nodes. It will take away a, a, a vote from one of those nodes. And this is better than having all four nodes a vote, but there can also be some issues with that. We will mm -hmm. not talk about the issues because it's too complex, but yeah. uh, believe me, there can even be issues if you have that. So it would be better if we would have an odd number of votes. And for mm -hmm. that is our witness. And now we have um, multiple possibilities how we can create a witness. We can use mm -hmm. PowerShell, of course. Everything is possible with PowerShell. We can use failover cluster manager, the old tool, and we can use the new tool, Windows Admin Center. Mm -hmm. But the problem is in the moment, we, uh, Windows Admin Center is not quite right for uh, on our Azure Stack HCI cluster. Why is that? Why is that? I, okay, I, I, I feared that you asked me that. So, <laughs> so let's have a look at Windows Admin Center. I start a browser. Mm -hmm. And I log in to. So you are logging to Windows Admin Center, right? And we need uh, to onboard our cluster to. Um, you have a typo, right? Um, the yeah. uh, to to Windows Admin Center, and um, as we only have, I think you know, we have only installed failover clustering, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, Windows let's... Admin Center sees only when uh, Hyper-V, right? Yeah, the Windows. Yeah, that's a problem. Actually, we don't have um, storage spaces direct installed. So if we now add our uh, new created cluster, so I will do that. He will recognize all the nodes. That's fantastic. Here's the cluster name. I will do add. There it is. So I change to the cluster. And it doesn't see the speciality of storage spaces direct, so the storage layer. So it assumes this is an Hyper-V cluster with SAN looms, so with cluster shared volumes. And you see here, we don't see devices, we don't see volumes, because mm. for, for Win Windows Admin Center in the moment, it's a normal Hyper-V cluster. OK. Yeah? So uh, that's, this is not the time to onboard our cluster to Windows Admin Center. We have to do that later. So this is why we don't use Windows Admin Center here. Okay. Uh, we use 
failover cluster manager here. But uh, so, and now pro question is, which, let, let me go here and yep. here and configure the cluster quorum setting. So we have, we select quorum and we have the possibility, failover cluster manager has a possibility to, to that we can choose one of three witness types. Mm -hmm. We have a disk witness, mm -hmm. a file share witness, and a cloud witness. So you have to know, and I know you know that, but maybe our viewers don't know, a disk witness is not allowed in a Azure Stack HCI cluster or a storage basis direct cluster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we uh, this the disk witness is for the classic Hyper-V ZAN scenario. Not for, yeah, it would be a uh, disk, you know, a disk would be required that all of the nodes have access to, and therefore you can't, you know, use a local disk, right? It, yeah, it would be possible with when we when we would have uh, storage spaces direct installed, we could do that. But then uh, yeah. every node can access <laughs> the witness, and if some yeah. nodes are down, the witness is still there, right? That's yeah, not yeah, the yeah. way we need the cluster to go. So we have right. the file share yeah. witness and the cloud mm -hmm. witness. For a file share witness, we, we need at least an SMB2 file share locally somewhere, but mm -hmm. we want to do the cloud witness. And that's not because you are from Microsoft, that is because Azure Stack HCI has to communicate with the cloud uh, at least every 30 days. So you have already um, a cloud subscription, an Azure subscription. And why not use a cloud witness? Because it's very inexpensive. We, we only need a storage account. And now Bernard uh, will, um, I will switch to Bernard's screen. And mm -hmm. Bernard now will create a storage account in Azure for us, right, Bernard? Yes, I'll do. Um, and sorry for apologies for my camera being offline once one more time. Um, yeah, so let's concentrate on the screen itself. Uh, I'm logged on to the Azure subscription um, to hold the cloud witness. Um, and the cloud witness is not a very expensive resource. Uh, it's just a storage account. Um, and there is not much data to be stored there. So um, um, it doesn't cost you a fortune. I think, you know, um, I would be even surprised if you would really uh, see anything uh, on your on your Azure bill. Maybe some That's, some sense, right? So, some sense, on. yeah. Um, so let's you know create an, an object, and I started in the resource group that I was um, that should be the target for the storage account. Um, I hit the create button, go into the marketplace, select the storage account wizard, hit the create button, and now I'm asked some questions you know into which subscription if you have multiple uh should the storage account go into which resource group um it should go uh let's take the one that we've just created and then enter some details um and you need to know storage accounts need to have a, a worldwide unique name um, as they are accessible via the internet. So uh, they need to be identifiable. Um, I, you know, from a naming convention perspective, I give it SA for storage account, then a maybe the cluster. I start out with lowercase values uh, letters, right? Because storage accounts only uh, take lowercase characters to CREN cluster witness. Maybe that's unique or hopefully that's unique in the world. It should be. <laughs> yes, uh, then I take uh, Europe, West Europe. Um, standard uh, standard storage account will do. We don't use, we don't require a premium one. We also don't require geo-redundant storage for that. I mean, you could do so, but uh, I don't uh, really think that's necessary for this. Then next, um, yeah, make sure that you have uh, security enabled, that, that you require HTTPS for that. Uh, you need to enable public access because, you know, we are accessing this via the internet. Um, although, um, yeah, uh, data protection, it is protected, you know, if you actually accidentally delete it, um, you could recover it within a, a period of time. Yeah, we can leave that on. Um, and then 
uh, let Microsoft manage the encryption. And uh, yeah, that's good. That's good for us to go and hit create. So in essence, you you use these standard um, right standard uh, uh, options there. Yes, and you know the um, if you if we would have done it uh, through Windows Admin Center, um, the results would be pretty much the same. Although we might not have seen too you know too many questions being asked uh, like like uh, like in this visit. However, um, yeah. Yeah, let, say, let me add yeah. something, uh, mm -hmm. Bernard, because I think it's important to add. We are now in March uh, 2023. Mm -hmm. Azure is a very, uh, it, it changes a lot in Azure. So if you don't see the same, uh, mm. same menus and same points here, I hope you still can get the main, uh, the main points and create it, right? Because I think when you go in here in a year, the yeah. The menus and everything would be not the same, yeah. but yeah, that shouldn't, right. shouldn't uh, hinder you to create it or use Windows Admin Center to add a different point. Yes. So the next thing is, I mean, to access your storage account, um, there's certain ways, right? But it is a it is an authenticated uh, way of doing things, and one way of authentication is to use keys for that. So that was the oldest mechanism for storage accounts. Uh, so that means you you do have two keys. Why two? Because maybe you know you lost the first one, um, then you still could use the second one. Um, however, uh, that's just for redundancy reasons. So the storage key, you know, is the thing that you need to provide to your cluster. Um, to do a successful uh, registration of that witness, um, and that's what you know I do. I copy and paste uh, this thing, um, and then Karsten will do the final steps in order to do the witness or uh, to do uh, the assignment of that witness with that uh, parameters in the failover cluster manager. I assume, All right? Okay. Over to you, Karsten. We will do that now. Okay, I switch to my screen. Bernard, you will. Uh, you have already uh, posted the the string uh, to the chat. So here we are still in the select quorum witness scenario, and I will select the cloud witness. Next, and then we need the storage account name that uh, Bernard created. So the same name, and I will copy the Azure storage account key, enter it here, and we go to next. And we have a little bit of text, what it will do. Then we go to next and we have it. We will have a report and in the report, everything, it's not very, very informative, but no. it's still okay. <laughs> and we go yeah. to finish. And we solved our first housekeeping point, the cloud witness. So mm -hmm. here we see we have a witness now. And if I go to the nodes again, the cluster also noticed there is a witness. So now every node has a vote and the witness mm -hmm. has also a vote. Yeah. yeah. You don't, yeah, go on. Um, yeah, if you would switch to my screen, uh, you could see that, you know, that I, um, that there I is that. some some content written into the, uh, the uh, uh, the container, the, the the storage account. Now, from the time you could tell, right? So this happened just you know some seconds ago, um, and this would be your proof that the cluster is actually writing to this um, to this uh, storage account, right? Uh, as you could see, not much data written. Um, that's just you know, there is for... not much data. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will switch switch back mm -hmm. to my screen. So first thing we have done. Now we do the networking part. And I told you already this is this is optional, but I I like to have the correct names here. So I go to cluster network three. I know cluster and client. This is the management network. And if we click on the network, we see the subnet. And also we can go to network connections, and we see the adapters of the different cluster nodes. And it's always the management adapter here. And we can also look here for the IP address. Uh, this is, yeah, it looks a little bit like an IP address, but it isn't. It's a, it's a private address. So I will change the name of 
this adapter to management. And I like the short form. Okay, and then we have two more adapters. These are our 100 gigabit uh, Mellanox adapters, SMB1 and SMB2. And this is the first adapter, so I will rename it to SMB1. And the second one I will rename to SMB2. Okay, so and you see a difference here. We have one network that is cluster and client, and this network the cluster can use to do external communication outside of the cluster. And the SMB1 and SMB2 are cluster only, so these are internal networks that the cluster only used to talk to other cluster members. And that's okay, our SMB networks are only for the traffic between the nodes, that's fine. But management, we also want to do different things from outside of our cluster. For example, you want to use failover cluster manager or Windows Admin Center to manage your cluster. Maybe you want to update your cluster. The cluster has to communicate with the Active Directory. It has to communicate to Azure uh, and so on. So we need uh, at least one network with external communication. So that is that is what we want to do in this video. And uh, we will see you in the next one. Right?